photography is an effective and useful method for separation and purification of organic compounds. Chromatography originated from chrome, which means color, and tography, which means to separate. This means it is the process of separating compounds by color, which was later used to, se to separate non-colored compounds. Chromatography is useful because in reactions we get a lot of different products, and we need to separate out the desired compounds from the rest of those products. Chromatography is going to separate compounds based on how well they adsorb to the stationary phase, which is inert, versus how well they dissolve in the mobile or liquid phase. Compounds with greater affinity for the mobile phase will loop faster than compounds with greater affinity for the stationary phase. Since the stationary phase contains a polar functional group, polar compounds will have a greater affinity for the stationary phase. Because stationary phase selection is limited, we must change our mobile phase selection based on the mixture. If compounds are eluding too slowly, we need to make the mobile phase more polar. But if they are eluding too quickly and not separating well, we need to choose a less polar solvent. Today you will be doing two types of chromatography. Thin layer chromatography and column chromatography. Thin layer chromatography is when the stationary phase is coated on a plate of plastic or glass. Column chromatography, the stationary phase is packed into a column. You will be determining the retention factor, or the RF value, from your TLC plates. The RF value can be unique for some organic compounds, which is helpful in identifying different compounds. The best separation of compounds occurs when the RF value is between 0.4 to 0.6. Today you will be separating two compounds, beta carotene and lycopene, which will be found in the strain baby carrots and the tomato paste we'll be getting at the beginning of class. The beta carotene, which will form the yellow band in your column, will be eluding first. And the lycopene, which will be the red band in your column, will elute second. You'll be weighing out 6 grams of tomato paste and 4 grams of strained carrots, preferably into a glass beaker instead of a weigh boat since both compounds will be very sticky. You'll be add, then adding 10 milliliters of 95% ethanol to the beaker. You'll take a spatula and mix this solution thoroughly. Once the solution is completely mixed, you will be removing the tomato paste and strained carrots from the beaker using filter paper. You will put two large sheets of filter paper into a funnel and pour the solution onto the filter paper. You'll be extracting the solvent from the solution. Make sure you get all of the of all of the solution into the glass or into the filter paper. You can see that the solvent is being filtered out. You will see that the solvent is being filtered out, but you'll want to Expedite the process and make sure you get all of the ethanol out of the solution by squeezing the filter paper together once all of the solution is in. So squeeze the sides of the filter paper so that all of that ethanol will go down through the funnel and into the flask. You want to squeeze as much ethanol out as possible. You can double up on filter paper to make sure that you're getting everything. You want to make sure that the 
What is left behind is dry. You will then transfer the paste into a dry Erlenmeyer flask. You want to completely transfer the paste using a funnel. Once the paste is completely transferred, you'll be adding 10 milliliters of dichloromethane into the beaker, into the flask. If you're having trouble getting all of the paste out of the funnel, you can use some of that dichloromethane to rinse the sides. You will then be stirring the dichloromethane and paste thoroughly. Once it has been stirred thoroughly, you will let the paste with the dichloromethane sit for 5 minutes, only occasionally stirring the solution. After you've let the solution sit with occasional stirring for 5 minutes, you will then be transferring the solvent into a clean flask. Now don't worry about accidentally transferring some of the solid into the flask as well because we will be filtering out that solid through a cotton plug in a minute. But try as best you can to just get the solvent. As you can see, some of the solid has been transferred into the beaker. Once again, don't worry about it. It will be filtered out through the cotton plug. Now that you have just the solvent, or as much of solvent as possible, You'll be filtering this through the cotton plug into a 25 milliliter round bottom flask. You, before you filter it, you want to add a bit of, an, uh, of anhydrous sodium sulfate. You only need a little bit, maybe about one gram. Swirl the flask with the sodium sulfate. which will dry the solution. Make sure you push the cotton plug into the funnel so that you are accurately filtering the solution.